So, so I was thinking about time uh, recently and, and information and, and light and um, <clears throat> this idea that, uh, right, we can see the light from stars, but that's looking back in time, the light's arriving here and the star might even be gone. And so we're kind of looking into the past when we see the stars. And so my question is, uh, when you're remote viewing the past, are you somehow accessing the light that was generated no. at that time? In, no, in it's way. not a physical phenomena. This is, there's nothing that's, there's not a signal. There's not a receiver. You're not looking at light. You're not looking at, at the transmission of anything. You're going into non-local consciousness. You know, in 1931, Max Planck, the father of quantum mechanics, was asked by the Observer newspaper in an interview, which was itself unusual because he didn't give a lot of interviews. And some reporter came up to him and said, you know, you and Einstein are the most famous scientists in the world. What have you learned? And I think what they expected him to say was something about atoms and molecules. Um, but what he said was, what I have learned is consciousness is causal and fundamental. You cannot get behind consciousness. Space time arises from consciousness, not consciousness from space time. Consciousness is the fundamental. And once you begin to think that way and you realize that, Einstein said, what we call reality is an optical delusion. I like the delusion part. Um, Pauli, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, most of the of the individuals we think of as the founders of modern physics didn't start out. They started out as materialists, but they ended up believing that consciousness was causal and fundamental. And so when you're asking someone to do a, a remote viewing task, they're not going anywhere. They're not traveling. There's no there's no transmission. What they're doing is opening to the non-local aspect of consciousness, the, the part that is the, what, what Planck meant by, by uh, causal and fundamental, what religion calls the spirit, I guess. Um, you're, you're accessing that eternal part of yourself. I mean, you, in order to understand this, you have to look not only at remote viewing, you've got to look at things like uh, reincarnation research done by Ian Stevenson, now Jim Tucker, Erlander Harrelson. Um, what you come away with is you recognize that consciousness existed prior, your consciousness existed prior to your birth, and it will continue after your physical death. It's the eternal self, what what religion calls the soul, but um, it's not about going somewhere. You're simply opening to a, a kind of informational unity. That's why I compare it to a Google search. The information is in the unity, but it's not anywhere in, in terms of physical location. It just is. The two great mystery questions for me are what is information and what is consciousness? And I don't know the answer to either one of those questions. And I don't know anybody else who knows the answer to those questions. So I was going to ask you, you know, when you think about where this information is, it's not anywhere. It's not anywhere. Okay. No, you're still stuck in space time, Derek. It's, this is not about where it is. It's not like it's, there's some sort of supercomputer that's tucked away somewhere. No, you're not, it's not about space or time. It's about information and consciousness and the shaping of information by intentioned consciousness. And again, you look at the research, uh, the, the, what I need to tell you is, I am a data person. 
I am not a philosopher. I am not a theoretician. I do not speculate. Everything I know about this is based on objectively verifiable research. So how, how do you describe, um, I guess, how, how should we visualize when someone is doing remote viewing, like it's not aware, but it's a, it's an ever present information field that you can just tap into whenever you need to. Yeah. Uh, whenever the conditions are right. Okay. Yeah, It's not a field. <clears throat> it's not a field. No, I think of them for want of a better term. I think of them as informational architectures. They are arrangements of information, but it's not a structure. It's not, it's not a space time structure. Uh, yeah, I mean, the way you have to think about this, and it's, it's, it's difficult because all of our training is about materialism, but this is not about materialism. It, it, this is about something that, that is, the, 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 let me think how to put this, the fundamentals of reality are information arranged by intentioned consciousness. So I don't know what information is and I don't know what consciousness is. I mean, I don't know who created it or I, I think what we think of as God uh, or gods, uh, you know, different religions. It, it, it changes the whole way you think about things. You realize that once you begin to see consciousness as causal and fundamental, and you realize, for instance, that we do not have dominion over the earth as if we were somehow the recipients of a bank account from a rich uncle, but that instead we are part of a matrix of consciousness and that all consciousness is interconnected and interdependent, well, you make very different choices because you realize that the optimal way to do anything is to have it foster well-being, which is what I am most concerned with. The fostering of well-being is the most efficient, most effective, cheapest, uh, most productive, nicest to live under, and most enduring of any uh, uh, arrangement or structure. So you don't, once you get that you are part of a matrix of consciousness and that it's all interconnected and interdependent, you make very different choices. You stop exploiting things, for instance. You stop polluting because you realize that what you're doing is harming not only yourself, but the entire matrix of consciousness. So you make different choices. Once you recognize that consciousness is causal and fundamental and that there is continuity of consciousness, you realize that things that you do that create negative circumstances, you're gonna come back and have to deal with that. So you'd be much smarter to make different kinds of decisions. The the importance of this research, the remote viewing research, the therapeutic intention healing research, the, the, all of this consciousness research, the real importance of it is that it is telling us about how the world, what we call reality, is organized and constructed. And that once you realize that that consciousness is the critical function, you recognize that you would make, you'd make different choices. You don't do things that harm harmony or balance, because when you do, you are not only harming yourself, but you're harming the future self. And so that's a stupid thing to do.